Welcome to Electro Online. What we have here in front of us is a line charge that goes from the origin to a position 0.5 meters above the origin with a charge density, linear charge density, of 7 microcoulombs per meter. And below the x-axis, for half a meter from 0 to minus 0.5 meters on the y-axis, a linear charge density of minus 7 microcoulombs per meter. Then we have a spot here 0.31 meters away from the origin in the x direction and we're trying to find the well the magnitude and direction of the electric field at that particular location. How do we do that? Well there is some symmetry there that will help us out. What we're going to do is we're going to take an arbitrary segment over here at a distance of y above the origin and that's going to be a small little dy segment, so let's call that a small little dy, and that will contain a small amount of charge dq. So let's go over here, and we can define the small amount of dq by multiplying the charge density at the upper end, so we have that charge density upper, like that, times dy. So the linear charge density times the length gives us the charge of that small little segment. Now, what kind of electric field will that cause right here at this location? Well, we draw a line here. And from there, and let me use a different color, notice that this will give us a DE, a small amount of electric field caused by this small little DQ. Of course, the equation for that, and let's see here, if this distance from there to there, let's call that X. It's a fixed distance, so X in this case is going to be a constant y is going to be the variable and so the slant distance right here this can be called the square root of x squared plus y squared again y being the variable and x being the fixed value from 0 to 0 0.311 meters therefore de is going to be equal to k times the charge dq divided by the distance squared, which will be r squared in this case, since r is equal to that, this would be equal to k times dq divided by x squared plus y squared. But for each segment above the origin here, we'll have an exact duplicate segment at the same distance below. So this would also be, well, call it minus y if you want. I'm just going to call it y, the, the magnitude of the distance, the distance y away from there. That will also cause an electric field at that location. Now notice the direction of the electric field here. Since this is a negative charge, the electric field will be towards the charge. Here it's away from the charge because it's positive, which means we're going to have a DE component right here of the exact same, oh, let me make this a little bit shorter so you can see that these are exactly the same, there we go, of the exact same magnitude, uh, let's try to draw it so that it kind of looks the same, ah, close enough, there we go. So we'll, say, we'll have another DE component over here, in this direction, the same magnitude as this, so the DE here will have this magnitude exactly the same as the DE there. But notice that each DE will have a horizontal and a vertical component. For example, this DE will have a horizontal component this way and a vertical component this way. This DE will have a horizontal component this way and a vertical component this way. You can see then that for each segment here, having a corresponding segment over here, that these two horizontal components will always simply cancel each other out. And therefore, the only surviving components are these components right here. In other words, you're going to have 2 times DE times, now we need an angle. So if we're going to call this angle here theta, that means that this angle here is theta, which means that this angle here is theta, and these are opposite sides to the hypotenuse, or opposite sides to the angle, I should say. So this is DE times the sine of theta. So this component is dE times the sine of theta, but since we have two of them, it'll be 2 dE sine theta, and that will be the magnitude and direction of the electric field component of this and this segment combined. So simply what we have to do then is integrate from here to there, double it, because we know that this component will also add 
the amount of electric field exactly the same as this one in this direction. So simply integrate from there to there, double it, and we'll have the total electric field strength at that location due to this line charge. Let's go ahead and do that. Now what we need to do is that the electric field is going to be equal to the integral from zero to here. Let's call that A for simplicity. I'm going to call this distance A, it's 0.5 meter from zero to A of 2dE sine theta. So we have the two in front because we're going to double it times dE. Okay, so we'll write dE times the sine of theta. Now, dE is equal to this. So this will be equal to two times the integral from zero to A of k dQ over x squared plus y squared times the sine of theta. But we need to express sine of theta slightly differently. Notice how we can do that. We know that the sine of theta, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And the opposite side here will be this distance right here, which is y. And the hypotenuse will be this distance, which is x squared plus y squared, the square root of that. x squared plus y squared. Oop, this should be a square. So if we then multiply the dE, which is this, times 2, times the sine of theta, well, I have the 2 over here, times the sine of theta, which is equal to that, so it would be times y divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared, like this. And then, of course, I have one more thing to worry about, which is the dQ, and the dQ can be replaced by the linear charge density times dy. So let's get rid of that. Replace it by the linear charge density. It could be upper or lower, but in this case, let's use the upper because that's positive, and times dy. And now, to simplify it even further, we can say that the electric field, the magnitude of that, is equal to two times. We can pull out a k. We can pull out the linear charge density. And then we're left with the integral from 0 to 0.5, we'll call it a for now, of y dy divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. This is not a bad integral to integrate because we have the proper differential, almost a proper differential. We need a 2 there, we need a 2y dy. Let's bring it to the denominator, that looks a little cleaner. So this is equal to 2k times lambda sub u times the integral of y times x squared plus y squared to the minus 3 halves power times dy. So this is basically u dy, uh, u du, but to get a proper du, we need a 2y here. So this is a y. We need a 2y. Where's my red pen? Here we go. We need a 2 there, and we're going to divide by 2. So these cancel out. And there's my proper differential. So when we integrate, we get x squared plus y squared to the minus 1 half divided by minus 1 half. So this becomes E is equal to K times lambda, the charge density per unit length, times 1 over X squared plus Y squared to the 1 half power in the denominator. Of course, but we're going to have to divide by minus one half, so it becomes minus, and we're going to need, let's see, divide by one times two. So the divide by minus one half, we'll put a minus in the numerator and put a two in the numerator, so minus one times two in the numerator. All right, so we can pull this out, and we have to evaluate this from zero to 0 0.5. Of course, A was a distance from there to there, 0 0.5. All we have to do now is find the values of that. Okay, let's come over here. We have E is equal to minus 2k lambda, minus 2k times lambda upper times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over this quantity right here, which is x 0 0.311 squared plus 0 0.5 squared, the whole thing to the one-half power, plug in the upper limit, minus when plug in the lower limit, 1 over 
Well, x is a constant, y goes to 0, x is 0.311 squared, take the square root, so simply 1 over 0.311. There we go. Now notice that this quantity will be bigger in magnitude than this quantity, so this will be negative inside here, times the negative will make this a positive quantity. So e is equal to, let's plug in the values, minus 2 times 9 times 10 to the 9th, that's a good approximation of that, times 7 times 10 to the minus 6, that's the value we got from over here, times the quantity 1 over 0 0.311 squared plus 0 0.5 squared, take the square root of that, minus 1 over 0 0.311. Now we're ready for a calculator. Starting with this right here, we have 0 0.311 squared plus 0.5 squared, add that together, take the square root, find the inverse of that, and then subtract from that uh, minus the quantity 1 divided by 0 0.311 equals. So that will give us approximately a minus 1.5, but because of this minus, that becomes a positive times 2 times 9e to the 9th and times 7e to the 6th minus equals and notice using the value 9 times 10 to the 9th e will be equal to 191,161 newtons per coulomb and of course that's approximately equal to 191,000 newtons per coulomb of course, if you want to use a more precise value for that, you'll get a slightly different answer. But this is good enough. Now notice, if we want to put that in a vector format, we know that it's pointing downward. So we can say at this particular location, at 0.311 meters away from the origin, the electric field is equal to 190,000 newtons per coulomb in the negative y direction. So we'll still need a negative here to indicate that it's pointing downward in the negative y direction. And that's how you find the electric field near a linear charge right here where this is positively charged and this is negatively charged at a point at midpoint away from this particular charge distribution. And that's how it's done.